Aloha for transitions. I don't know if you can see it better this way, but I think it's this way, but I don't know. One of these ways you should be able to read it. Aloha and welcome to this quick pip clip, this power in partnership moment where we're gonna look at the arc of connection, getting into addiction recovery, relational healing, and contemplative practice. And today we're gonna to keep it simple and we're focusing on the four transitions. So here on the Hawaii island that I find myself on, where I have the great good fortune of calling home, it's day 32 of our shelter in place. The transitions from one thing to the next become all the more important during this time because this is where the magic happens. This is where we can source ourselves with renewed energy, renewed intention, renewed focus of what matters most. Why am I saying all this? Because I believe it is time for us to wake up to ourselves, to our impact on the planet, be responsible for the energy we bring into every situation. And how do we do that? We pay attention to the minute particulars, to the everyday mundane, to the actions we take on a daily basis. What is the rhythm of your life? What is the discipline in your life? If you don't know how to answer those, no worries. The time is now. If you already have systems in place and structural supports in your daily schedule, fantastic. Share them with me. I want us to come together, collect our wisdom, and share what's working. So, four transitions. The first is waking up in the morning. If you're anything like me, perhaps you wake up in the morning and your mind starts going pretty darn fast. Like it's been running a marathon <laughs> overnight and you're just waking up and witnessing it going along. Others, I think, wake up a little more uh, slowly. Maybe they have to get themselves onto the track and get running. My mind's already going. It's just kind of how I'm wired and I, I'm not fighting it anymore. I'm more accepting and embracing of it. But what I do is when I wake up and the story's going, the parade of thoughts, feelings, sensations is cruising across, I get to pause and smile upon awakening. I attribute this number one transition in my day to Thich Nhat Hanh, the Vietnamese Buddhist monk, who said this simple practice, it's almost like tricking the mind in a way, because when we smile, it sets up a neurochemical cascade of feel-good hormones, chemical reactions and a sense of ah all the way down the spine of I'm going to be okay no matter what. Because I'll tell you, sometimes the thought of what's going on out there can be like <clears throat> gripping, seizing, grasping, clenching, tight fist, <clears throat> can't breathe. That's not how I want to start my day. Because if I feed that, then I just want to put the pillow over my head try to go back to sleep and block everything out. It doesn't always get me where I want to go. So first transition, smile upon awakening. Second transition is moving into whatever rhythm and flow I have going for the day. So I have a lot of things that I do during my day to support radical self-care. That's not where I'm going in this quick video. In this quick video, I'm gonna tell you the transitions, those in-between spots. So smiling upon awakening is from the unconscious realm of sleep into the conscious realm of daybreak. We have a rooster, a wild rooster that cruises around our little neighborhood and sometimes we wanna get rid of it. Like my husband will come out there with a slingshot, like go away. But what I remember is the rooster represents the Kane energy, the consciousness, the awakened energy. And it's there to rouse me, to rally me into the next moment in deep space, in deep time. So today I didn't want to kill the rooster. Today I got out of bed, smiled upon awakening, sets a whole new outlook upon my day. Second transition is getting outside, period. Before I get on my computer, before I answer emails, before I do the next technological thing particularly and you see my big exhale because for me the energetic exchange here is pretty intense i get to have a pretty strict media diet 
So before I tune into that, I tune into that. And I'm pointing to natural great beauty. At minimum, I get out on my lanai, get out of my front door, get out on the porch and take in some moment of beauty. We have an ohia lehua tree out front and the blooms and the bees and the beauty abounds. If I am not present to it, I miss it. If I do not soak it in, I cannot have that energetic exchange with it. So transition number two, step outside, find beauty out there. Let it stoke your inner beauty. Transition three, the end of the day. So for me, that tends to migrate. Um, when the boys were in traditional school setting, wasn't a Zoom room in their bedroom, I endeavored to be done by three to be present with them. Didn't always get there. Work in progress here. Whenever I close the computer and say, done with work. A lot of my work is on the computer right now, as is yours, I'm guessing. Whether you're a student, a counselor, a coach, um, a business managerial type, whatever it is, there's a lot of computer action going on right now. This transition, I invite you to pay attention to leave some fuel in the tank. What does that mean? That means, as one of the great writers said, don't write everything out today. As one of the great orators said, don't speak it all today. Leave some in the tank. Leave some inspiration that will get you back to your work tomorrow. So the idea here is not depletion, not the illusion of completion, rather a sense of pacing oneself throughout the day. So there are a lot of exercises I do during the day. I pause, I'll do some deep breathing. I'll pause, I'll do an eight minute workout. I'll pause, I'll go to my hydration station and hydrate wildly. Whatever that is throughout the day. The third important transition is when I end work to leave some fuel in the tank so that I'm inspired to come back again tomorrow. And finally, the fourth transition is when I put my head to the pillow at night. Ah, reviewing my day, the introspection, the unexamined life is not worth living. Taking that moment to focus on what went well, what could I improve, where did I fall short, what am I grateful for, what do I appreciate, and if I can, sharing that with others. The what went well is a beautiful transition ritual to share with my beloved and the other beloveds in my family. When the boys were little, we did the rose, thorn, and rosebud. The rose was the beautiful thing in the day, the thing you really loved that was yummy about your day. The thorn was that ouch, that owie part, that disappointment, that part you wished hadn't happened. And then the rosebud is what you're looking forward to. What's on the horizon? Again, pacing yourself throughout the day, these four transitions start here. Smile upon awakening, step outside and seek beauty, leave some fuel in the tank, and review your day at day's end. What went well? Keep it simple, keep it alive. You matter, your relationships matter. Aloha and be well. Please share this with others if you think it would be of service. Right now we're all lifting each other up. We need each other and that's okay.